Thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Jean-Charles and, and Yunhui for the very nice uh, introduction. And uh, yeah, you have mentioned our project a couple of times. And uh, I think the transition is quite neat because uh, we dig into one of the topics you mentioned to look into whether house prices uh, have increased, uh, increased uh, due to, to COVID or change in preferences. Uh, so to answer this question, uh, our team and, and myself, we couldn't resist uh, the temptation to go granular and use uh, the, these alternative techniques uh, or yeah, data sources that I will mention uh, uh, in my presentation. Uh, so this is joint work uh, with uh, not only the team I'm working in, in the economics department, but across the house, uh, several teams. Uh, you will see the names uh, at the end of the, of the presentation. So this is ongoing work. We have an update of the of the paper that has been cited uh, with 13 countries. Now we have moved to 18, but only 16 actually, 16 countries are uh, present in this study. For uh, uh, they, they have uh, comparable uh, data for uh, yeah granular house prices. Uh, you will see uh, the metadata later on. So as um, can you see my slide? The slides, by the way. Yes. Cool. yes, we can see okay. the volume. Yeah. Uh, so let me start with the presentation. Can I move to the first slide? Yeah, so our uh, motivation was basically to uh, assess economically and empirically uh, whether these anecdotes of uh, flight to the suburbs or this donut effects actually occurred, uh, whether it's actually measurable. Uh, so you have seen this across the world. Uh, so it was not just in the US story. There were a lot of papers in the US uh, assessing basically whether House prices in the suburbs have increased more than in the city center because people moved out. But uh, you can see here a few snapshots uh, from, from newspapers around the world that have mentioned these uh, anecdotes. Um, so the basic idea around uh, this project is uh, this monocentric model uh, by Alonso Mills and Move, uh, basically postulating that uh, due to acclimation benefits and um, uh, uh, the, that um, manufacturing and uh, jobs are actually concentrating in the city center, and people uh, that work in these uh, in these jobs have to commute, and that they were therefore uh, prefer living close to these areas, but they cannot live all in these areas. So this leads to this, uh, downward sloping bit rent curve uh, that you that you all know, and that are quite, kind of famous, and that, that might be also the reason. Why you know, we uh, didn't find it so much for the US, this flattening, because as we will see later on here in my presentation, uh, in many US cities, uh, this uh, negative house price gradient uh, is actually not not set in, in most in many kind in many cities. That might be due to kind of a life cycle thing that uh, this donut effect or this flattening of the curve has already occurred over the uh, last decades and has uh, in actually inverted the gradient in many cities. Uh, so this AMM, this uh, Alonso Smith mood that postulates a negative slope and uh, uh, yeah, downward sloping house price indices as, as you go away from the city center does actually not apply to all US cities. So we will come back to this. But the, the basic idea is that uh, that people are pushed uh, out to the, to the outskirts and they have to, there is a trade off basically between commuting costs and, and house prices and also then dwelling size. As you move further out, you for the same amount of money, you can afford um, bigger, uh, bigger houses basically. And that's what one of our driving uh, motivations for um, yeah, the hypothesis that uh, COVID and yeah, the following uh, increase in working from home practices might actually drive people uh, to go uh, to move further away from the city center. The basic idea is this, uh, uh, and you can see that in the stylized map here, uh, five times 30 equals three times 50, it's simple math. But the, the idea behind is that uh, the acceptable distance basically for, for residential uh, areas has increased because people are no longer required to commute five times a week, but now only three times a week. So if there's kind of an, an envelope that people would allude to uh, uh, to commuting, if you keep this envelope, this acceptable uh, commuting time basically per week constant, then the uh, conclusion would be that people now would be accepting living a bit further away, which we can just see in, the, in this map, in the stylized map for Ile de France. So basically the light green areas are the areas from which you can reach 
500 restaurants. Restaurants here are a proxy for social and economic activities uh, within 30 minutes by car. You find similar pictures for public transport and uh, and uh, and other modes of transport. And uh, so that's light green. That's basically the kind of the the residential like the area around Paris where people commuted with the the the, the central business di district, and they could accept before COVID to live there because they have to commute five times a week, thirty minutes one way. So now, uh, if you and extend this commuting time to 50 minutes per day, I mean, for for per way, uh, one way, 50 minutes, then you actually find this uh, dark green area. So the acceptable distance to the city center has increased, basically. So that's the idea. Uh, so just to sum up, uh, there's an ex uh, extensive literature on, on the agglomeration benefits and why cities have actually survived so many crises. Um, so at, at the end, the constraint of supply in the city centers, uh, coupled with uh, uh, the strong demand, actually leads to an ever increasing house price gradient. So the idea is now that uh, this revolution with working from home practices and also Industry 4.0 and all these, uh, these new times of, uh, of working together might actually uh, cause a revolution and it could explain why this time might be different. Um, uh, in, in addition to, to this working from home, there's also this uh, idea of knowledge spillover of physical presence on site is maybe no longer necessary with uh, industry 4.0 or not, not that, that uh, existential. And also additional supply now in, uh, in urban centers with uh, uh, the, the, in, the increasing need for, for office spaces um, could lead to more conversion uh, of, of office buildings into residential homes. So that may put push, um, release pressure in the city centers and could flatten the, the, the gradient even more. So this gives this testable hypothesis that has been mentioned already uh, by Unoi also. also uh, so there's ample evidence in the literature that the, the house price gradient in, uh, in city, uh, uh, in urban areas has flattened. But most of this is actually conducted on single countries, mostly the US. We also find uh, um, empirical evidence for this flattening of the house price gradient in in England, mostly London, and uh, there are also a few other uh, studies on China. So what we basically did is uh, we went back to old school uh, old school uh, techniques and used a lot of manpower and woman power basically to collect data. So the problem with this uh, this project was that um, city level uh, house price indices or national house price, indi indi house price indices or regional house price indices are not actually uh, sufficient to understand whether there was a shift within urban areas. So we needed more disaggregated granular data, and there's actually no harmonized database for such a such a thing. Uh, not even in Eurostat uh, for for the European countries, but uh, we obviously at the OECD always strive at uh, having uh, data as, for as many uh, countries, including uh, non-European countries as possible. So we went actually back uh, with a lot of colleagues to collect manually by contacting uh, national uh, statistic institutes and even um, offices and private data providers um, to collect this house price transaction database on the, on the granular level, mostly uh, postal codes. But also in rural areas and municipalities, and for some countries there's open uh, data, uh, like for France and the UK, where you get actually data for each transaction, so you can build the house price indices or for local units yourself. So as you can see here, uh, the coverage is actually quite good for these countries uh, in terms of population. Uh, uh, the area is not always uh, perfectly reflected, but uh, we will concentrate on, on urban areas because the the hypothesis of this trade-off between commuting and house prices actually applies mostly to, to urban areas. So this is what we get for the Paris area. So on the left-hand side, you have the level uh, of uh, per square meter house prices. And on the right-hand side, you have the change uh, for each local uh, area, for each local unit, the change in the house price from the second half in 2021 compared to the second half of 2019. So it's actually the two year period that we were interested in that we, we kind of uh, ascribe to, to a change due to COVID. So you can see here that uh, there's a lot of dark red on the right hand side in, in the outskirts, uh, whereas uh, the initial gradient is quite negative because you have a lot of uh, dark red in the, in the city center. So this, this kind of uh, 
uh, would mean that for the Paris area, you actually see some flattening um, as some of the most demanded areas are now outside uh, the, the city center. And it's actually in this dark green area that we have seen in the stylized map at the beginning, where we looked at uh, how far would people accept to live away from social and economic activity. So very much consistent with, uh, with this initial idea. Uh, for the Budapest, uh, this is actually the most striking even because uh, the same negative price gradient pre-COVID was was actually uh, in the data, so a lot of uh, dark red in the in the in the city center, and now the change uh, over the past two years actually shows that the, the outskirts uh, have experienced um, much higher increases in house prices than the city center, where house prices stagnated or even declined. So this is a, a plot where we looked at the initial uh, house price gradient pre-COVID, and that might also hinge on uh, whether uh, why Hunyui and many other uh, people haven't found uh, flattening or found mixed evidence for flattening in, in U.S. cities. The problem in, in, the, in the U.S. is actually that half of the country, including large urban areas, do not actually exhibit a negative house price gradient. So the, the the starting point of all this uh, hypothesis of a flattening of the of the, of the house price gradient does not actually uh, um, apply. So if you look at Detroit and Philadelphia, for example, the house price gradient was positive or non-existent. So why should be, there be a flattening? So all the forces behind this monocentric model that might lead to a trade off now shifting demand further to the outskirts due to COVID and, and due to working from home practices. Uh, this driving force is actually not not there, or it might uh, there 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 are there are other forces. So the urban structure is completely different. So we have actually looked at um, for for the other countries, most large urban areas do have or did have a negative uh, house price gradient. So the working hypothesis there applies, and we can we can work with these. But we have also created other subsamples then where we only looked at cities where within. Uh, significant negative house price gradients. Uh, similar, uh, by, by the way, similar things we find in, in the UK, where a lot of urban areas do not have, uh, they're actually quite sprawled. So that's that's one of the, the items that we can see there. They are so gentrified already that they are sprawled and they are, they are no longer monocentric, uh, except for London. So London is, is, is the, the sole exception in, in the UK as a large urban area with a very negative and significant post price gradient. So just uh, to uh, show you the baseline uh, specifications, so we built with all these uh, local unit house prices, basically we built a cross section of house prices with changes over a two year period. So we checked from the second half 2017 to the second half of 2019 and then 2019 to 2021. And we, had, we basically re regressed this on, on the loft distance to the uh, center business uh, uh, district. And this data actually shows us how much uh, the, so if this data is positive, it means that there was a flattening uh, of, of this house price gradient. So the further you go uh, outside uh, or away from the city center, the higher actually the house prices have increased or the amount of house prices have increased. So that would translate into a flattening. Then uh, one of the, the innovations that uh, we have used in this new uh, leg of the paper, uh, also thanks, thanks to uh, Alexandre Bonke, who will also speak here at this conference later on. Uh, so we used uh, his results uh, of uh, using satellite Im imagery, so basic training satellite imagery with um, the Copernicus Urban Atlas to track basically land use or changes in land use. Uh, so what you see here on this uh, slide is uh, the city of Dublin, and uh, the, um, the figure shows the probability of a change in, in the residential land use between 2018 and 2021. In the paper we have used 2019 to 2021. Uh, so when this uh, machine learning uh, implied probability goes ab above a certain threshold, we basically use this as, as effective uh, residential construction that occurred in this area. And this will be our proxy for additional supply, which will help us to delineate better uh, demand or uh, from, from supply. Because when you look at prices, house prices, obviously they are the result of demand and supply pressures. 
So we want to have an, uh, a proxy for supplies so, so as to better uh, estimate measure demand changes. And then we use uh, for working from home, we used uh, Google Trend Indices. We also look at Google Mobility. So this is ongoing. Uh, so this is the Google Trend Index for, for France here. And the beauty of this uh, Google Trend Indices is they are harmonized across the world for, for uh, all kinds of langu languages. And they are also available at the tier two level. So at the regional level that we can then match to our uh, urban areas. So the, the augmented specifications, uh, so basically the extended specification here is then that we look at uh, 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 this flattening, uh, basically the part of the flattening that is, that is due to uh, an increased use of working from home practices, that's the green part here, and also the part that is due to uh, supply pressures. So if there's not, uh, if there's not a, a lot of supply, we would ex 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 expect a, le a lesser flattening because of the, the, the increased demand but that feed directly into supply and there's no pressure on the prices. And then you have this part that is uh, the standard part that is not related to supply and uh, working from home practices. So in the baseline specification here, uh, we only have then the log distance as an explainer variable for the change in, in house price uh, gradient. And you see that prior to COVID, so that's the first part here, prior to COVID, the two years prior to COVID, actually in these large urban areas and the AMM compatible urban areas. So that's, that are the ones where we have a ne negative house price gradient going into COVID. Uh, so the coefficient is actually negative. So that means that the, the, the gradient became more and more negative. So the more you go, the more the distance to the um, two largest identity cluster, so the uh, city, city center increases. Uh, the, the the more the price decrease. So and post COVID, you see that uh, the inverse actually uh, occurred. So uh, there was a flattening, uh, both in large and in AMM uh, compatible uh, urban areas pro, uh, post COVID. So this is our, our was our um, hypothesis, and it's confirmed by the data so far for most. I mean, on average, so it's significant. So when we go to this augmented uh, specification, we actually see that a part of this uh, flattening can be ascribed to working from home practices. So you see that when you add the interaction of working from home, so which is our Google Trend Index uh, for for the search word Teams, which is actually got quite a good proxy because Teams was not Googled that much before, but uh, a lot afterwards. And uh, I think we can all agree that that might be um, have have something to do with the tool we use today actually for this conference uh so a part of uh, basically the flattening can be um uh, ascribed to this working from home practices and also when you look at supply so the additional supply is negatively correlated so then you actually find an increase uh, in, in in this uh in this uh, log distance uh, parameter at the beginning so basically it helps you to delineate um uh, the price pressures in, I mean, to the demand from supply pressures uh, that we can see in the prices. So basically, the three assumptions that we had uh, were matched so far by the data. Uh, additional supply uh, is uh, helps to attenuate basically the pressures on 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 the house price gradient, whereas more working from home um, leads to contributes to this flattening of the house price gradient. So basically, what we can see here. So we have demined all the variables. So that's basically just uh, showing graphically what's going on in the regressions. Uh, so depending on uh, how intensive the working from home practice in, in the FUA, in the urban areas are, um, uh, the gradient, so on average, the gradient has uh, has flattened. So you see an increase uh, in with the distance and house prices, but the flattening was uh, starker, I mean, greater the greater uh, working from home uh, was actually used in this area. And inversely, uh, the more you basically have seen uh, cons residential construction in this urban area, thanks to Alexandre Blanquet's data, the less actually we have seen flattening. And that, that also uh, is related to how you basically construct. So we have found already evidence that uh, the more this construction is intensive, uh, and has not led to a sprawl, the, the more actually the flattening is att attenuated, which um, uh, sheds, uh, I mean, 
seems to say that if there are less bottlenecks to residential constructions, then this flattening is actually less uh, intensive. Uh, okay, which, actually, uh, uh, might around be 20 minutes, so perhaps, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that 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 was actually it. So this is our first or early paper from from spring, uh, with a, a lot of co colleagues uh, and, and co-authors that I have uh, uh, referenced before. Uh, and now we we work on on, uh, on 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 a new paper, basically with this new uh, extended data set, and also we try to follow up with a bit more uh, a few more uh, assumptions, basically what drives this flattening and what can also create um, um, explain more heterogeneity actually the outskirts that we see. Thank you.